Well, not our usual Sunday morning. We just pray that Brenda's going to be okay. Good morning, folks. Again, I'm not on the bulletin, but I have the distinct honor and pleasure today of introducing our guest minister and welcoming him. Our new senior pastor, Bill Bolte, is on a foreign trip related to a prior mission project and will be making his official debut on August 13th. Susan, for the last six months or so, has been carrying a tremendously heavy load, and quite well, I might add. But this week, she gets to relax and hear David Washburn deliver our message. I found out that David and I have one thing in common. We're both displaced Tar Heels. <laughs> David received a, an economics degree. He's from, he's from Kinston originally and had a degree in economics from Carolina, followed by a short career in banking before deciding upon the ministry. He received his Master of Divinity degree from the Baptist Theological Seminary in Richmond and subsequently served as pastor, senior pastor, of a couple of different churches before being elected treasurer of the Baptist General Association of Virginia in 2013, a position which he still holds. He and his wife, Paula, live in Richmond. They have three adult children. Paula couldn't come with him today. We were disappointed in that, David. But David, we're delighted to have you today. We're sorry about our problem with one of our valued members, but uh, let's give David a good welcome. In the interest of time, um, we're going to change things up just a little bit. Sorry, Pam, I didn't talk to you about this. Um, but Carolyn Landrum is coming this morning to sing for us. Carolyn is not a stranger to this group. You know her well. Um, but I'm going to ask her to go ahead and come and sing because she also has to get to her church because she directs the choir there. So, Carolyn, I'm just going to ask you to come and sing um, now, and, and we'll move things around. But thank you so much for being here, Carolyn. It's an honor and a privilege to be here with you this morning, and it's always a privilege to sing music for Jesus. What a glorious thing that God has done in giving us music. Because those of us that sing, we take that music and we internalize it, and uh, it enriches our, our love for Jesus and our lives as we, um, as we try to live for him day to day. Um, one of the, the first song I'd like to do for you is an old song. Um, we've all been at the point of needing to know that God cares. I know right now Brenda needs to know that God cares. There's difficult decisions to be made. Work has become unbearable, and we, but we can't leave. We can't move on right now. There is some unspeakable pain that looms over us day after day. But songs come to us at a particular time in life. I know years ago there was a song that was very, very popular, a gospel song, One Day at a Time. And it talked about how we depend on Jesus one day at a time. I'm waiting for somebody to write the song called One Foot in Front of the Other. <laughs> Some days are like that one foot in front of the other. This song carried me through some very dark days in my life. And if you're in that place right now, this song is for you. <clears throat> should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home? When 
forgive me for just a minute. I'm going to get that bottle of water down there. <laughs> it's allergy season. <clears throat> it's good to have a good husband that, that helps you out. <clears throat> I am convinced that there are many Christians who walk around feeling guilty and ashamed and defeated. I walked that road for a long time. I know what it's like. Something in our past, something in our past, Satan uses as wallpaper in the room of our minds. He puts wallpaper up that reminds us of shameful things. He puts posters up. He puts words up 
that remind us of things in our past. And we just, it cripples our Christian life. It draws, it keeps us back, holds us back. But Jesus said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. We are not alone. His spirit lives within us in power. And that was one of the most valuable lessons that I learned a long time ago by reading a little book called uh, um, uh, Broken Free. And it told me that the Spirit will give me the power to overcome if I will just turn it over him, over to him and trust him. He will take our burdens, our guilt, and our shame and give us victorious lives. And then there may be someone here who is thinking, I've got to get better before I can come to Jesus. The bad news is none of us are good enough, and none of us will ever be good enough. But the good news is, Jesus lived a perfect life, and that made him good enough for us. And so today, I ask you, whatever place you're in, to come, come as you are. of sadness from wherever you've been come broken hearted let rescue begin come find your mercy oh sinner come kneel earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal so lay
Carolyn, thank you again so much, and I know you've got to go, but thank you again so much. One quick thing, it, most of you may not know this, but Carolyn and uh, Linwood Granger are brother and sister. Did you know that? Linwood taught her everything she knows about singing. That's right. That's right. Thank you again so much. Um, we're going to go on. Yeah. Okay, so our scripture reading this morning is John 5, 1 through 11. The healing at the pool. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five colored colon covered colonnades. Here a group, a great number of disabled people used to lie the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath, and so the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath. The law forbids you to carry your mat. But he replied, The man who made me well said to pick up your mat and walk. This is the word of God for the people of God. Good morning, everybody. Hey, Grace, how you doing this morning? Everybody doing good this morning? Good morning? Good morning, good morning. I'm going to throw some different languages at you as to say hello or different things. But bienvenidos, Spanish for welcome. Konnichiwa is Japanese for hello. Ciao is Italian for hello. And then another is Latin, but based back, that's how you get language in Italy is carpe diem. Carpe and diem. Can you say it one time? Carpe diem. Can you say that? It means seize the day. Bonjour. There you go, man. And in a timeline, there's a past, which happened a little bit ago or long ago. You got the future, which is going to happen, and then you have the present. And remember, it's just like a present, just like a gift. The present moment. You have to live in the moment. And when things throw, life throws things at you, people fall or you have situations like that or different scenarios or whatever, if you trust in God and you know Jesus, you won't get knocked around or get lost. You'll always find a way back, a circle, back to God by living in the moment. So if you practice with prayer, you get good at things. People that do the acolyte, they're very good at it. They've done it before. They practice it. They're good at it. So remember these three things, carpe diem, seize the day, live in the moment, trust in God and know God and Jesus so you won't get lost, and then if you practice things, you get very good at them. So don't be afraid of the moment that's coming at you, whether you're nervous, happy, or scared, because the moment's coming, whether you're ready for it or not. So by trusting Jesus and knowing God, you'll be ready for anything that comes at you, no matter what. Okay, so practice things, live in the moment with God and Jesus, and seize that moment and be ready for it. And you'll be ready for it. Pam's good at the piano because she's practiced. Susan, 
just did a wonderful job. She practices at it, and she's good with it. And if you know and walk and talk with Jesus, you'll have power in your heart to be ready for anything that comes at you. Okay? Yep, feelings, whether they're good, sad, or whatever, be ready for them. And if you're happy and you say thank you when you wake up in the morning, that'll help set a tone for the rest of the day. So let's say a prayer and then we'll go to children's church, okay? Lord, thank you for getting us here today with all these wonderful people, all these beautiful children, young believers in Christ, everybody in this sanctuary. And please help us get through this day and this Sunday. A uh, special prayer for Brenda and help her healing and anybody else in this church world that needs your healing. Please help and guide us in everything that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm really impressed. <laughs> I took French and Spanish and I know nothing. <laughs> We're going to sing just the first verse, only of Footsteps of Jesus. It's in 483. This will be our hymn of sharing, hymn 483, Footsteps of Jesus. everybody. Um, before I start, I'll be brief, but um, in a morning that was filled with uh, excitement and a little bit of fear, um, as a relatively new face here, I'd just like to speak out for a moment and um, talk about how all I could feel in this room this morning uh, was love. It genuinely um, blew me away how this entire room um, was taking a moment away from themselves, concerned for others, and it was, it was a moment that I felt proud to be able to be a part of this church. Um, seeing this group together as a family, as one church, it blew me away. I'd just like to really say that blew me away this morning. In a time of fear, um, I saw something beautiful this morning. I'd just like to say I really was proud to be here in this moment for that. Um, let us go in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for letting us gather here today. Um, in these coming moments, as we take some time to give back graciously um, to you as you've given to us, I'd just like to thank you for those gifts that were given to us, as they will always be far greater and far sweeter. Um, those gifts that were given to us through you for the betterment of you and your community, I'm thankful for those. And I pray that as we continue to go through this life, that those gifts that you've given us will be able to bloom and uh, grow as we give back just a portion of what you've given to us. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen.
Would you go to God in prayer with me? Our God, what a privilege it is for us to be in this place to worship you this morning. And sometimes it just takes something to remind us of why we are actually here. Sometimes it takes something to remind us that we are a family of God. Sometimes it takes something just to turn our attention back to you. And in the previous moments at the beginning of our service, I saw that happen. I looked around and saw so many in prayer because of their concern and care for one of our family members. And we continue to remember Brenda this morning as she is um, at the hospital. We are thankful for medical personnel, not only right here in our, in our congregation, but also medical personnel um, through the rescue squad and at the hospital that will take care of her. And we pray that they will quickly find um, what's going on with her and that she quickly will be um, back to herself. We ask for healing for her and we ask that your presence be with her. We ask also, dear God, that you help us to remember each and every day that as First Baptist Church of South Boston, Virginia, we are part of the body of Christ. It is you that we represent. It is you that we worship. It is you that we share about with others. So as we go about our lives in, the, in this day and in the future, may we remember to share love, the love of Christ with all that we meet. These things we pray in your holy name. Amen. Let me first say thank you for the invitation to be with you this morning. South Boston has been a long and valued partner of the Baptist General Association of Virginia, and I want to thank you for that partnership. We are better because we are in ministry together. And this is truly one of the privileges and the pleasures of my role with BGAV's opportunity to share Sunday mornings with the Virginia Baptist family. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, my heart is heavy, as I'm sure all of yours are. I don't know Brenda, but you do. And we love her and care for her and want to pray for her. The message I had planned this morning just doesn't fit in light of what we've experienced this morning. There may be a day when I can come back and share that message with you. But I believe there's another word that we need to hear this morning that the Spirit has stirred within me um, as I sat there and prayed and observed, and I hope you will receive it with the grace and love with, within which it is shared. And it does have to do with prayer. You know, there was a passage in Luke where the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, you know, we see you going off by yourself. We see you spending time in prayer with, with God. Would you teach us how to pray? And that's where Jesus shared with them what we now call the Lord's Prayer. Then there's many occasions in Scripture when Jesus is praying. But the one I want to specifically read and share with you this morning it comes from the 22nd chapter of Luke. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew by the stone's throw beyond them, knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. 
An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. You know, in the 30 years that I've been in ministry, prayer is one of the disciplines that I believe we take very seriously and can be so vital to life. But for all of those years in ministry, I've yet to figure out exactly how it works. You know, prayer is one of those occasions when we come into the presence of God and we share with Him the needs of our heart. We prayed for Brenda because she needs healing. We pray for discernment that God would help us discern what's next in our lives as it relates to maybe a vocation or maybe to a relationship. So we take our needs to God in prayer. But prayer is also a time for us to listen and to be attuned to God as Jesus was. And what has come to my mind is a day that I had in ministry, the first church I served in Earliesville. Every morning I would go into Charlottesville, or Louisville was right on the outskirts of Charlottesville. And um, I was a younger guy at that point, and the way that I chose to exercise was playing basketball. I didn't like to run or jog or to, to lift weights and do that type of thing. I wanted to be active in what I did. So every morning, there was a group of guys that gathered at ACAC at 5.30 to play basketball. And what I loved about this group is no one was there to prove that they should have been in the NBA. It was just a group of guys that were there to have fun and get exercise and, and to just enjoy. So for an hour and a half, we played full court basketball. You know, and over time, you get to know people. Because invariably, there'd be 10, then 12, then 15, and you'd wait your turn, and you'd talk, and you'd get to know people. And the thing that was so funny and so consistent was, you know, invariably, when I'd be on the sidelines with somebody, and they'd say, hey, David, what'd you do? Well, I'm a Baptist preacher. And they all got the same look. Because what they're thinking is, man, have I had a potty mouth today? Have I fouled him too hard when he's gone to the basket? And, and you have those conversations. I always just, just kind of chuckled and, and took it in stride. But an interesting thing happened. Over the course of several years, I became pastor to that group of basketball players. None of whom went to church. And I remember one morning we had, we had played basketball and I'd gotten back and gotten cleaned up and gotten to the office and my phone rang and it was Jeff. Jeff was one of the guys we played, played basketball together and he said, did you hear about Jerry? Now Jerry was one of those young bucks who had started with us when he was single and then he started dating and got engaged and married and you know, Jerry wasn't there this morning. We knew that his wife was pregnant so we were all kind of assuming, you know, maybe she's delivered the baby and so you know Jeff called me and said yeah you know um, Jerry's wife ha has given birth um, she's at Martha Jefferson Hospital and Jeff said but I don't know but something's wrong can you go see him and I said sure well as it turned out the night before a couple in our church had given birth so I was making plans to go there, so I said, I'll, I'll go see them both. And so I decided I'd go see Jerry first. And so I walked into the room, and Jerry was holding his son, sitting on the edge of the bed, and he and his wife were just distraught. It's not the room you expect to walk into when a young couple is just giving birth to their first child. And I said, Jerry, what, tell me what's going on. And so he proceeded to explain to me that his child had been born with a condition 
in which he would not live more than 24 or 48 hours. He looked up at me and he said, why? That's the question we really don't like to get. And so I told you, I said, I don't know why. I can't answer that question for you. But what I can tell you is, I'm here with you. God is with you. God knows exactly what you are feeling. And we will get through this. And we spent time talking. And then at the end, I asked if I could pray for him. And so I put my arms around them and I prayed. And I walked out of the room and I just cried. Took a moment to collect myself and go down to the next room where Marky and Michelle were. I walk into that room, grandparents are there, smiles, laughter, stories about how labor had been, and just such enthusiasm and utter joy for the life that had been brought into their family and for the future that that promised. And I celebrated, and we laughed, and we hugged. And at the end, I prayed for them. And gosh, was it a very different prayer than what I prayed over Jerry and his family. And again, I walked out to my car, and I just cried. And that got me thinking. And again, it's, it's thoughts that I've had all throughout my ministry. Is this, this idea of prayer. Yeah, how does it work? What does it provide? When you got two families that go to the hospital for the same reason, and they get very different results. And there's a few things that I've come to learn about prayer in this time of ministry. Is that one time, sometimes I think all too often, we feel like prayer is about what I'm going to get. And, and now Scripture is clear. Share the concerns of your heart. Jesus wants to hear them, so we need to pray to God. About God, pre, please bring me clarity about this. God, please bring healing. God, the relationship that I am, it needs this. God wants to hear all of that. But then I also think there are some times when we pray, and sometimes it, it can be in the life of the church even, when, when there's something we want to accomplish. There's something we feel like we just got to do. And then the prayer goes something like this, you know, hey God, I'm over here. And we've got this great plan where we're going to go in this direction. So God, God, you come over here. You come over here and join me in what I'm doing and we're going to go do this. I don't think it's supposed to work that way. We're not supposed to invite God to come bless what we're in the midst of. I think what we're supposed to do is pray to God to find out what God is in the midst of. And then pray that God will take us there and lead us in the midst of whatever that might be. God needs and wants to hear the prayers of our heart. But I think we have to be careful when we want to co-opt God to what we feel like we want. I remember a Another occasion, same church I was serving in Earliesville, and a member of the church went into surgery at UVA to have a, a mass, went to, actually went into Martha Jefferson to have a mass removed. They'd been doing all kinds of tests, and that they felt like it was very benign. There was not going to be, be much to it, but th this mass that they had originally taken scans of that had been a little bit bigger than, than, than a golf ball, by that time, it had, had grown to the size of a grapefruit. And, and, and the physicians there were not equipped to handle it at that point. So they, they actually said, 
we're going to close up, we're going to let you heal, and then we need to call in a specialist. So they closed her up. A couple weeks later, she went back into surgery, at which point th that grapefruit-sized mass was, was about the size of a volleyball. And the doctors came to the family and said, she's not going to make it. And I was there with the family. And there was life support and there were heroic measures that could be taken. But they just weren't sure. And so the family looked at me and said, what do we do? And I said, well, first we pray for the discernment of God. And then you as a family need to decide what is the most, what is the greatest expression of your love for her in this time. And so we prayed for God's discernment. We prayed for healing. But we also prayed for if that healing could not come here on earth. We prayed that God would prepare us mentally, spiritually, and emotionally for what was next. And I've led people in more prayers like that than I can count. And it's so very difficult when someone's in the midst of a crisis like Jesus. And what we have to pray for is acceptance. I remember another occasion in the hospital with a family where the circumstance was difficult and dire and did not look good. And the family asked me, David, will you pray for healing? And I said, yes, I will. I said, but, but I also want to know what's it going to be like for you if healing doesn't come on this earth? And we had a great conversation about faith and about the presence of God and the healing that can come. And that person was healed. And we celebrated that healing. And we gave the glory to God. But what was, in my mind, even more vital was the conversation we had about faith if that healing doesn't come. So when I think about prayer and what I think prayer is intended to do for us, I view it as God being this island, an island of strength. And you know, if, if you've ever been out on a boat or, or on a raft or anything when you're on the water and you start to get taken out, start to get taken off course, you want the stability of land. You know, if you're fortunate enough to have a rope and, and, and you can throw something back, you know that if that rope lands in the right spot, you know that you're not going to be able to pull that island. You're not going to be able to pull that land over to you. What's going to happen is when you anchor yourself and you start pulling, you're going to pull yourself towards land. And I think that's prayer. I think prayer is certainly sharing with God what's on our heart. But prayer is also an opportunity for us to draw closer to God. To not pull God over to where we are, but to pull ourselves Closer to Him. And so when we pray, and we pray for Brenda, and we pray for her healing, and we pray for those circumstances in life that are less than they should be, and those relationships that are less than they should be, let's also leave space to listen to God. And let's make sure that prayer 
pulls us closer and closer and closer to God. Because when we do that, I believe that's when we experience the fullness of God's presence. So that no matter the circumstance, we can make our way through it. Because God is with us. Jesus knew that God was with him. In this moment, he said, if there's any other way, please. And God said, I got you. I'm with you. May this be a day where we can all fully experience that God has got you. He's got Brenda. And we will all make our way through this because of the love and grace of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. God, I echo the prayers that have already been prayed on behalf of Brenda. We're so thankful for all who have come to care for her. Thankful that as she left, she appeared to be okay. But knowing that there is still uncertainty and questions that need to be answered, and so we invoke your presence to bring clarity of what has occurred, to bring clarity about a path forward. And boldly, we pray for healing. We also pray that our spirits will be attuned and aware of your presence. That as we pray, we pray that we might draw closer to your spirit, to your will, and to the God and Father that you want to be in each of our lives. So that as we voice our prayers, we will also listen and follow. I thank you for the way Jesus modeled prayer, for the way He modeled obedience. And I thank you for this congregation who is the presence of Christ in this community. May they respond boldly and faithfully to your presence in their lives. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask that you stand as we sing the first and the second verses only of Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, hymn number 411.
David, thank you so much for that very powerful message this morning, very timely, and for listening to God's voice and um, in what you should bring to, in the message you should bring to us today. Thank each of you for being here as well. Um, I have just a couple of announcements. One is that the, the rose on the um, ledge here is in honor of uh, Bill and Sarah Bolte's new grandbaby that was born last week. Um, and we want to certainly pray for Bill's safety um, while he is in Liberia and his safety um, on the return trip. And then also I want to remind you that next Sunday evening at 7 o'clock is our community choir concert. And I hope that you are making plans even now to be here and be a part of that. Let's go to God in prayer once again. Our God, thank you for the gift of prayer. We thank you that we have the privilege to be able to come before you ourselves to express our concerns to you. But we pray that you would help us also to remember that prayer draws us closer to you. And we pray that, you would, would, that we would allow you to be drawn closer to us through our prayers. These things we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen.